In this short demonstration movie, we're going to introduce OpenSpirit Connect and show how you can use OpenSpirit Connect to perform a variety of different business tasks. OpenSpirit Connect has a tool, a designer tool, that allows you to define different process definitions. And these process definitions can do different things. Uh, they can uh, implement web services, they can uh, do data transfer, automate data transfer tasks, they can do a variety of different uh, business uh, processes. And the way that you design a business process or process definition is through use of activities represented by different icons. And these activities are grouped in different categories or palettes. So we're showing the designer tool open and we're looking at the FTP palette which is showing different activities for either putting or getting files via FTP. There's a file palette for reading and writing files or pulling for changes in files in a directory. There's an HTTP palette for uh, responding to an HTTP request and constructing a response. There's a JDBC palette for connecting to databases to read or write data from any relational database. There's a JMS palette for sending and receiving Java messages. There's a mail palette for sending and receiving email. A whole series of palettes for doing different activities. And this is a toolkit that you can use to put together and implement your own composite application. And we've introduced an open spirit palette here that uh, adds the ability to connect to these uh, specialized geotechnical data stores that OpenSpirit connects to, things that aren't just uh, relational databases. There might be binary data on file or inside of a database. And we also, through the OpenSpirit palette, can deal with coordinate systems and unit systems. So in this example, let's go ahead and design a process that will transfer data. And let's imagine that we have a well master that uh, has well header information in a Oracle database. It could be SQL Server. It could be other databases. In this case, we happen to have Oracle in our office. And we've already defined a data connection to our well master. We've used the JDBC palette to define a connection to our well master, which is basically just a, a host and port and the identifier of the Oracle instance. Um, we want to make another connection to the destination database. Let's say we want to extract data from our well master and we want to then write it to our working project. In this case, let's say it's a OpenWorks R5000 project. Well, R5000 is not just a simple relational database. You need OpenSpirit to connect to it. So we're going to go ahead and use the OpenSpirit palette and drag an OpenSpirit data connection into the top level in our designer project. And we're going to create a new data connection. We're going to call this our OW OpenWorks teapot. We're working in the Teapot Dome area of Wyoming, and we want to load some data to this project. So let's select the data store type, and this is reading what data stores I have configured in my office via OpenSpirit. And it looks like I have a variety of data stores available in my test network. Let's go ahead and connect to R5000, and we see that I have different districts or collections of projects. Let's select my onshore district, and I want to write to a project called Copy Teapot UPM12. So there, I've made a definition of a data connection that we'll use in a moment. Then the building blocks that we're going to build are process definitions. You can link together multiple process definitions to perform more complicated uh, uh, workflows. But we're just going to make a simple process definition. And a process definition has a beginning, a start, and it has an end. And we want to fill in the pieces in between. Well, for this simple demonstration, let's just uh, add some processes that will read from a database. And let's read from our our well master database. So let's use the JDBC activity and let's do, get the JDBC query that will allow us to query data, some well header information. Then we want to write the data. And let's see, we're going to be reading some well header information and we're going to write some uh, well data via OpenSpirit. And let's go ahead and get an insert activity. And that insert activity we'll use to insert the, the well. So let's uh, call that well insert. It helps to give titles to these activities so it can be self-documenting. Um, let's add another activity because I also want to write some attributes to and create well bores. So I'll do a well bore insert. So I'll just change the name here. And let's change the name of the very first activity to indicate what we're doing is we're, we're reading wells. So we'll read wells. So now we have our basic activities. We need to chain them up to perform a, uh, a workflow. So let's go ahead and connect these the way we want, with arrows moving the right direction, showing what we're going to do with the data. Now we 
can click on any one of these activities and configure it. We go to the Read Wells activity, and we need to give it some information, such as what database to read from. So we'll go ahead and use that data connection we already established to our Wellmaster. We gave the information it needed. And now we get to construct a SQL statement. Well, we can either type SQL in this text block here, or we can use a query builder, and I'll use the query builder. And it's going off now and connecting to my Oracle database. I'm looking at all the different schemas here. And I have one schema my Wellmaster is in called Neurolog. And I'm going to find my, my Well header table, which is simply Well. I can drag and drop that into my query builder. And I can then double click on the attributes that I want to query for. I want to query for the unique well identifier of the well. And I want to get the, let's see, let's get the well name. Let's get the surface latitude and longitude. And let's see, what else we want? Let's get the driller's TD of this well. And we also want to get the operator. But I happen to know that the operator is actually uh, in another table. It's joined. Uh, so we'll have to pick up the business associate table. So let's go up here to our top of our database here and find our business associate table and it knows the join condition there and I'll pick the business associate name because I might get the name of the oil company that operated that well. So now I say OK. It's now designed a, a fairly complicated SQL query for us and actually I want to edit it a little bit because there was a uh, relationship between uh, wells to their parent wells that we don't need to worry about in this case. So I'm going to simplify my, my where clause a little bit. So I'm just joining on my operator name. There we go. So it's now indicated which attributes we want to select from these two tables and what the join condition is for those. So we go ahead and, and apply that. And save this. And every uh, activity has both an input and output. This activity is reading well, so it creates an output, and it's going to create an output that is result set, which is a series of records. And each record is contained the attributes that we requested. The, in this case, the well identifier, the well name, its surface location, its TD, and, the, uh, and this is the name of the operator of that well through the join table. So that's the read activity. Now, for every well we've read, we want to do a creation of a new well and a new well bore and insert that into another database. Um, so we actually want to loop over all those wells. So let's put these two activities inside of a group here. So we, we, we did that. Now, now we have those in a group and we want that group to be an iteration and what we're going to do is we're going to loop loop over wells again. It's good practice to change the names so then somebody coming back and look at this process definition will understand what it does. It's uh, virtually self-documenting. So I'm going to iterate and I have to tell what I want to iterate over and what I want to iterate over is the records. Each each record corresponds to one well so that's that's what I'm iterating over as I'm looping through all those different uh, wells and I want to call each each iteration element a well. So now <clears throat> let's go to our insert activity here and here we're using Open Spirit, so we have to get an Open Spirit data connection, and we're going to connect to that uh, Teapot Dome project in OpenWorks R5000. And then we'll use the Query Builder here to create, in this case, an insert query. And we want to insert, in this case, through the Open Spirit common model, uh, we're going to create an Open Spirit well, which will then create whatever's necessary in OpenWorks. And we want to write the uh, unique well identifier, which is required. We want to write the location, the name of the well and the operator. Let me go ahead and apply that. Now we see that this activity now has some inputs. So the way we're going to get the inputs for this activity is to map the outputs of previous activities. So here's where we're doing our data model mapping because we're reading from a data model that is the proprietary data model to this to this well master. In this case, it's actually a PPDM data model, but it could have been um, your own company's data model. Um, I'm going to go ahead and simply do a mapping by dragging and dropping. UWI maps to identifier. Well name maps to name. Um, the business associate name maps to current operator. 
this location looks like it's a complex element. If I open it up, we see it's comprised of an x and y, a z location, and a coordinate system. Because whenever you deal with open spirit, we're precise about defining the coordinate systems and units. So let's go ahead and map the x and y's. The latitude goes to my x, the longitude goes to my, my y, the z is 0 because we just had a two-dimensional location. But where are we going to get the coordinate system from? Well, I happen to know that my well master, which is in North America, all the latitude and longitudes are in NAD 27. So what I can simply do is go ahead and uh, bring in another activity into the, my process definition to assert an open spirit or assign an open spirit coordinate system. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into the workflow where I'm going to go ahead and simply uh, have that coordinate system flow into the this next step here and that in that coordinate system activity I'll I'll pick the coordinate system that I know all those wells are in I know they're in NAD 27 so we have a little coordinate system selector to either select map projection or geographic systems and this is built on top of the open spirit coordinate service which uses the EPSG database so I can select all the different amongst all the different geographic systems or knowing some fragment of the name, I know that it has 27 in it because I want NAD 27, then it constrains it to just the, a shorter list. Now, since the uh, coordinate system I picked has a datum that differs from WGS84, I need to provide a datum shift in the event the data needs to be shifted when it's uh, uh, written to the target data store. And I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, this geocentric translation. So, there, now I have have uh, provided a definition, a precise definition of the coordinate system. So now when I go back to my mapping activity to insert the well, I can go ahead and read that coordinate system and simply drag and drop it. And uh, by the way, if I knew the EPSG code, I could have simply provide the EPSG code. Right, so I could either use Open Spirit Coordinate System Selector or provide the, the, uh, the EPSG code. So now we've done the mapping required for our well insert to uh, to uh, complete. Now let's go on to our well bore insert. That's where we're inserting information about properties of the well bores that might be associated with that well. So we're going to use the same database we're going to connect to, the same OpenWorks project, and we'll build a SQL query here. Here we're inserting a well bore, and it looks like it requires its parent reference to its parent well data key. We'll get that from the previous activity, and it also requires the the well identifier. And the information we want to write to the well bore is the total depth. That's a property of the bore hole as opposed to the uh, as opposed to the well. So now we go to our input activity here, and we need to map to the identifier, which we can get from the well that's in our iteration loop. And the well is a reference to the parent well that was just created in this well insert. So if we open the well insert, we see it has an output that tells me the data key of what was just created. And so I simply map that there. And then it needs the total depth, which looks like it is one of these complex elements. It needs both the total depth in terms of a value and a unit. Well, I have the value. That's that drill TD. Um, again, I'm going to have to resort to bringing in another activity into my design here, which is the unit activity. And I'll simply uh, wire that in so the output of my units, which has some commonly defined. There we go. Let's just reposition these things a little bit so it looks a little bit neater. It doesn't change how it works. Um, we now have the units which could find some standard output, some common units, and we're going to pick up the foot unit there in a second. So let's go back here to the wellbore insert. We need to get a unit. We'll get that from the units activity and just drag a foot in there. So that leverages the Open Spirit unit service which describes over a thousand different units. So we now have completed our mapping. We've read data from some native model in an Oracle database someplace in our network. We're then using Open Spirit to find and connect to an OpenWorks project. We're going to insert a well, and then we're going to insert a child well bore. And we're going to loop over all the wells we read here. So now we're ready to run this simple process definition to load the well data from our well master to OpenWorks. But before we do this, let's look at the data that's over in OpenWorks. We're going to bring up a window into our Linux uh, workstation where we're running the landmark OpenWorks uh, uh, well data manager. And we can refresh this window and show there's no wells currently in that database. 
So now let's go back and let's run this in our test mode so we can actually see it run. And as we run it, we see the uh, lights flashing on the different activities indicating what stage it's at. And it actually read all the wells and now it's looping through the wells. And we can look back in our Linux window and see the count and number of wells increase. And it, we see we've written out the wells with the UWIs, the operator name. We scroll over and we even have gotten the, uh, the coordinate information which has been correctly converted into the project coordinate system that, uh, that OpenWorks expects. So now it's going through and we'll finish in just a few seconds here. And we limited, I think, this to 100 wells. So just in a few seconds, it, it created 100 wells in OpenWorks, 100 well bores, and uh, did the appropriate translation of the unit and coordinate systems in that. So this is a very simplified sort of data transfer task. A real one would be more complicated than this. And some of the variations you might want to do on this is it you probably don't want to just start this manually. You probably want this to start upon some condition. Maybe you want to check for new wells uh, in the past day and run this every night to transfer wells. And you want that constraint also to be to a certain area. Um, so you could easily have, have had a different type of process starter. Let's uh, stop this tester and just go to the, uh, the general activities palette here. And there is a activity here called a polar, or timer. So we can make that we can make that the starter and say that we want this to run. Oh, let's see. Let's see. We want it to run uh, starting uh, the 17th at 12 p.m. We want it to run. Um, let's say every day and run once a day at 12:08 uh, p.m. And that would then cause this job to run every day. Of course, you may want to do it something different than this, but. Uh, another variation might be that when the job is done, you might want to send an email to someone. So you could very easily just say, well, when the job is done, instead of just ending, I want to go ahead and I want to send an email. And then you can configure that email task with the appropriate uh, address of who you want to send it to and also the message. And you'd have in the message the number of wells that were inserted or any error messages that might have resulted. So this is a toolkit where you can design your own custom workflows with very sophisticated sorts of customizations possible and you're leveraging all these pre-built components that exist here for integrating in different IT systems. Uh, let me open up an, another project that I built earlier that shows a more realistic uh, workflow that we built uh, to meet a particular customer's needs for synchronizing data between their, uh, their well master and their working projects. Let's go find this other project. So in this other project, we have some process definitions that are a little bit more complicated. In this case, we have a number of process definitions that deal with moving data between a well master, which case was PPDM for this company, and the working project, which was GeoFrame. So they had a process definition designed to propagate changes from the well master. And this was a process that was put into a loop that was executed once a day. It read when it was last ran. Then it queried to get all the wells that had changed since it last ran. And then it went ahead and queried to see if the deviation surveys had changed. It queried both the well header and the deviation surveys. And then it went ahead and it queried the target working project to find out uh, if the data that well exists that have been updated and if it does exist then it updates that well if it doesn't if it's a new well it goes ahead and follows this branch down here to insert it and when it's all done it writes out the time at which it actually had run so it knows when to run next so that's a more uh, realistic sort of workflow that uh, was described the same way that I showed you a moment ago by putting together these different activities wiring them together and configuring them with the uh, appropriate information so again this is a, a toolkit that can uh, be used for any number of different types of uh, data transfer workflows.